Hey, Ro, thanks for coming on. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, you. Welcome to Inspiration Day on The Confident Musician. And um, yeah, it's, we're very grateful to have you here. Um, basically, you know, the, the whole context behind The Confident Musician is to um, help people develop careers uh, in the music industry, do what they love and, and make a difference and uh, also make a living. Great. And um, yeah, basically when I saw you put up the up into the ether um, film clip um, last year, I was like, wow, he quit his job. That's so cool. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> and then yeah. to see your post um, just recently about, um, uh, you know, being 12 months full time, I was like, wow, that's so cool. And um, that's what inspired me to reach out to you and, and uh, to be able to come on and, and share what it is you do. So it's, it's great to have you here. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for reaching out. That's really awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. And so for those of you who don't know Ro, um, his project is called I Built the Sky and uh, it's original instrumental, would you call it progressive metal rock? Yeah, it's, I've, yeah, I mean, it's I, I basically in a progressive metal, I'd say is typically what people would say, but you know, whatever. <laughs> in that sort of vein. And uh, he, on uh, Spotify at the moment, he has 41, thousand monthly listeners uh 39,000 subscribers on youtube four million total views on youtube and uh up into the ether which the video i just mentioned uh has just clocked over one million views so congratulations on that too it's a pretty cool milestone i think wow that sounds like a lot those numbers that's awesome yeah i was pretty i was just like enjoyed looking them up i was like wow this is cool that's um cool. and if you'd like to find out more about Ro, you can check him out at on instagram uh, and YouTube and Facebook. The handle for Instagram is at I built the sky. Yeah. Cool. So I've got some questions that I'd like to um, share, uh, talk to you about today and uh, find out a little bit more about your journey and share with the community um, about how, you know, how you've got to where you are and uh, some of the, the challenges and, and, uh, and fun stuff that you've um, got to do along the way. So I guess, you know, let's start at the start. Like what was, what was that sort of, you know, what got you into music and what, what was that turning point where you're just like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. I want to, you know, sink my teeth into this. Um, yeah, definitely. When I went to high school, um, the school I went to was pretty low key school, you know, public school and everything. Um, but it's just really, a really, really strong, like music community there. Lots of like rock and metal and that going on. Um, we had a really cool guitar teacher, um, and yeah, when I just saw him playing these cool riffs and stuff, it just blew my mind. So yeah, basically as soon as I started getting lessons at high school, I was really hooked. Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to share? I, I love that story. So can, do you want to share the song that you um, yeah. that really changed that? <laughs> that yeah. of, I remember a moment, in, <laughs> a moment when I was, uh, I don't know if I was in a lesson or just somewhere in the music room and the guitar teacher started playing pretty fly for a white guy by offspring <laughs> their, their yeah. guitar riff just that power chord thing pretty simple really but um i remember just being absolutely blown away and thinking like i, I can't believe i just heard that i can't believe yeah. you just did that that is insane and i, I remember saying to him please teach me that please i'll do, I'll do anything <laughs> it just it really it just it really got me so yeah i, I remember that as, as a strong moment yeah, that's cool. I'm pretty sure um, one of the first songs I learned was an Offspring song, Power Chord Riff, was probably, um, I can't even remember the song, it was like, it's all right, it's not all right, or... Oh, uh, the kids aren't all right. That the could kids be aren't all right. Yeah. Or oh, whatever it is. I know that those Power Chords, I'll have to look it up. I might yeah. have to look it up, not knowing the answer to that question. <laughs> could be that, um, yeah. Cool. And so, yeah, what, like, and, like obviously going through um, and learning about the guitar and all those sort of things. So what were those sort of key musical influences that's really got you into into playing the guitar and, and i think you, you played a little bit of piano and stuff growing up too yeah so yeah in in primary school i learned piano um more so through my mum's doing you know trying to give me those opportunities to you know learn keyboard and everything like that which is great but yep. wasn't that into it um necessarily back then i think you know it's quite young primary school you know um it just wasn't you know, I didn't really take too much notice of it. Like I was, I was definitely interested in music. Like my family, a musical, like my dad plays guitar um, and performs and things and loves music. So plays music a lot and 
all that sort of stuff. But um, um, yeah. So wait, wait what was your question? <laughs> so what were you like? What were those like key musical influences? Like you know, you got into Offspring at the start, and then but like to get into that sort of progressive metal, like who were those? Oh uh, yeah. So you. So definitely like um, the punk sort of stuff early on got me really going and um, yep. cause it was stuff I could actually learn at, when I was early on cause it's quite simple and that sort of thing. So like Green Day was a big one. Blink 182 was a big one. Yeah. Um, um, then, then to get into the heavier stuff I started like, I, cause I had a lot of like metalhead friends and there's something inside of me that I just, I just really love that shock value of like, what's the heaviest band ever like yeah yeah <laughs> and you know with your mates you're always like competing like nah this is the heaviest thing ever you know like and it's just something about it, it just amuses me um so i remember um in high school friends showing me like corn and stuff and uh i was thinking like wow like music can't get any heavier than this this is yeah, yeah. The peak. <laughs> you know um so yeah just from there just kept on like i had a lot of friends that were um really savvy about new bands and all that sort of stuff and they would always show me things i remember sunk lotto being a really big one yeah yeah they were doing some really impressive stuff early on really um and uh yeah yeah so and then from there you know it was after school when i was uh, studying that i found like bulbs demos misha mansour from periphery so that yeah yeah that that was a big moment really because um because he does his demos himself and at that time i was still in bands and things and then i realized wow i could do this myself i could could save a lot of time and like you know get my way with my choices and stuff you know yeah he's a he's a pretty cool guy and uh like i was fortunate enough to meet him after one of the periphery shows in melbourne and he, like this is before, uh, probably before they got really big, but he was just a really genuine guy. He's like, hey man, let's get a photo. And I was like, wow, this guy yeah. is so cool. So That's awesome. Uh, and also, yeah, being a phenomenal musician, he's, yeah, it's, that was a really cool moment, I think, just to, to meet you know famous musicians and yeah. uh, and connect with them and just to be down to earth. I think Mark was there, was there as well. So I'll have to dig up that photo now that I- Was that Hi-Fi Bar? Uh, I think this is Gershwin Room at the ESPY. So yeah, I, I was there, was even... I was there. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'd actually knew much about them before I went and saw them, but I just assumed that they had two singers. Um, oh, right. They had one singer and three guitarists. I was like, okay, cool. That's different than what I expected. But yeah, fascinating. I like, yeah, I'm a periphery fan too. So, um, Cool. And so, um, yeah, so is there anything else sort of in that sort of initial phase that was like, you know, sort of a like significant turning point besides... Um, what, what, yeah, what sort of got you into that instrumental side of things as opposed to like playing in bands besides that sort of Misha stuff? Yeah, I, I think it was Misha. Yeah, that really, yeah. that that was a big door that I went through really. L learning that he could do it himself, you know, instrumentally and it was really power, like really powerful music instrumentally. I didn't feel like I needed vocals to enjoy that, what he was doing. Yep. So. I think it was from there that, that I was like, I'm, I want to do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. yeah. So, and then, and then just lots of people were around the same time discovering that kind of style and Tesseract was doing stuff early on, like through Ackles demos and things, yeah. um, which I came across as well. So th those two things, probably the main, main thing that got me interested in instrumental music and, yep. and really, really, pushing the skills even further on the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And um, yeah, so now I'm, I'm really fascinated about how you've actually turned this into a career. Um, I played in an instrumental band for probably five or six years and now the total income was probably maybe a couple of grand or something like that over those three or four years. Um, so yeah, just learning about that, that you were actually going full time with it was an actually fascinating thing. I was just like, how are you doing mm -hmm. this? So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to really sort of talk to you about how that sort of was that organic thing. Or was it like I know you talk? We talked about it last week. Um, you said it sort of you started getting some income, streaming income. But how did that sort of start to you know where did that sort of change and where did you sort of um, realize that there was actually something you could actually make a go of? So definitely a long and slow process, and and most of the time I didn't think it was going to be possible. 
So I just sort of basically, I mean, how it kind of started was that like initially, like all through high school and all through my tertiary music um, school that I went to in Box Hill, um, I was trying to make a career as a musician, you know, like that's what I want to be. That's me. I'm a musician. That's, that's what I identify with. That's how I enjoy my life. You know, this is what I, I feel like I'm have some sort of skill in, you know, um, but, but it, it is, it's a hard thing. Right. So, um, and eventually I got to a point where it just wasn't working out. I was, it was, I was in bands for the wrong reason. You know, I was, it was participating with different, different bands because I thought they could, there could be a career in it for me, you know? Yeah. Um, but where it really turned for me is when I decided, you know what, I'm not going to try and make it as an artist. I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do it for fun, you know? And I, I think that is the reason why I'm where I am now because I just sort of threw it out the window. You know, I didn't lose any of my passion or anything. I, I it just increased, always increased, but, but I started working, I got a teacher's degree. So I spent a year at, a, at Melbourne Uni getting a teacher's degree. And then I went into full-time employment as a music teacher, um, doing instrumental teaching, did some classroom teaching and things. Yeah. And, and that allowed me to like, you know, I was earning money, right? So I was, I, I was able to build up my studio and I'd always have my weekends free. So I knew I could, all right, I'm going to, as soon as the weekends come, I'm, I'm in the studio and I'm working on my own stuff and just, just having fun with it, not stressing out about trying to be a successful musician and that sort of thing. Yeah. Don't, just forget about that stuff. You know, I'm just going to have fun, you know, and, and like instrumental music, that's not really a good career decision, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so anyway, I would, um, put together an album. Like I always wanted to release an album and with the yep. bands I was in, it just never quite happened, you know? Yep. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to do it for fun and I'm going to release an album. I'm finally going to do it. So I spent a lot of time working on that, writing it and learning about mixing through that process and mm -hmm. mastering and the end result's pretty poor, but that's okay. At least I learned a lot about it and I'm, and um, it got me started, put it out there and I, you know, you've got, YouTube and Bandcamp and MySpace and all that sort of stuff. So I'd put, put music out there through those sort of channels. And, and I just like straight away got, a, got at least some people interested in what I was doing. And I was like, Oh, that's nice. So yeah. And um, you know, but I mean, I wasn't making any money or anything at that point when I started making money was probably on my second album. So I, I, I had released, another EP before that and some B-side demos and stuff like that. But, but when I released my second album, I, I um, did a pre-order and everything like that. I mean, that would have been about four years after starting my full-time job. So for four years, I'd been working and learning about mixing and stuff um, and trying to hone my writing skills and stuff like that. And um, yeah, then that second album came and that, that brought me some opportunities and I did a lot of music videos on YouTube, which got some attention and um, just started building, started cause I was, cause I was working and getting an income. I was able to invest in like promoting my, my stuff. So I, I would promote my, you know, my Facebook page and my music and um, you know, yeah. I mean, I put, I put a bit of money into those channels and things like that, you know, um, trying to get people to see my music and stuff like that and just keep keep going keep making music and so at that second that second album um, um i sort of i started to see a tiny little dot of light that maybe maybe i could go to four days you know who knows but um then then what happened was because I was, I was working full time for like seven and a half years at this mm -hmm. school and it was great initially it was definitely a great a great gig for me because I was, um, you know, teaching and getting an income. I enjoyed my, my job. Um, lots of like everyone around me was great, you know? Um, but, but as I went in, you know, like, cause I'm very obsessed with music and technique and, you know, really, really sort of pushing the pinnacle of, of like technical profic proficiency on an instrument. Yep. Um, not, not to say I'm, I am, but I'm just like, I'm interested in that. That's sort of my mindset. And, um, you know, when you're teaching kids first lessons every, every day, um, it yeah. just, just, it just started to, it just wasn't connecting with me 
you know, personally, I didn't, I, I didn't feel like that was really my purpose on, on this planet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of weighing me down a bit. And, um, I was very passionate about my music. I had people interested in buying my music and I was starting to do shows and things like that and get a good response there. Um, and, um, yeah, so at about the seventh year, I was kind of getting a really, really upset about my position in, in, in the planet. Cause, cause, um, yeah, I had so much passion for making music and, and creating music, but less, less for teaching people's first lessons and trying to develop ways of getting a kid to actually pick up their instrument at home. You know, if, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, if, you, if you're not, if you're not interested, it's, you can try different techniques, but ultimately it's, it's a hard thing, you know, props, props to those teachers that can, can really make that happen. But it's just, it's not my strength, you know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just, it just made less and less sense to me. And, and, um, at, during the, that seventh year, I was working on my next album, my third album. And, um, I knew that, you know, I had learned a lot over those, those years of doing it myself and my songwriting and stuff. And I felt like this music is definitely my best thing I've ever been, I've ever done in my life with any band or any, anything like that. So I was very, very happy with the, the music I was making. And I thought, and, and also very depressed because of where I was. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have to do it. You know, there's no, there's no seamless way to, to do it. You, you get to a point where it's like all in or what, you know, you, you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And I figure like, you know, I always think about like what my future self would say to me looking back, back down to me, you know? Yeah. I, will, I mean like, cause any, any smart person would say, dude, don't do instrumental music full time. That is stupid, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is completely fair enough. But, but for me, um, it just, I just didn't want to live, not having given it a chance at least, you know? Um, so I was really lucky that, you know, I, I announced to the world, Hey, I'm doing this full time. I put that video out there, you know, I was still working at that point and yep. putting this video out there that I'm not working anymore. Um, you know, I, I had just stopped, you know, right when that video came out is when I just stopped, you know, I just, I took a, I took um, leave from work and everything like that. And, you know, kind of got a bit messy there with work and stuff, but, um, yeah, but um, you know, I just I I wasn't coming back. That was it. So um, yeah, yeah, and then I just all in. So at that point, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do my Patreon. You know, I'm gonna be more active on YouTube now that I'm at home. I can can do more. You know, so that's gonna just expand my income. You know, and it's ever since then, I'm I've definitely made the right decision. Looking back, absolutely. Yeah, right. And I'm sure there's like so many people that would be watching this or listening to this and, and are either on the, like the, at the end of their career going, oh, I wish I did that back in my twenties or thirties and uh, the other side of it, like they're just like, how do I actually make a career out of it? So um, thanks so much for taking that step and, and believing in yourself for, for everyone else, including myself, listening to you talk about it and actually going, Hey, like it's possible. Um, and uh, you know, you got to, yeah, I love that idea of, you know, imagining your future self talking back to yourself. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to do that when I get off. I'm like, what is my future self wanting to tell me right now? Oh, absolutely. I think that's key because you know, where it's hard, you, you got to make these really, really tough decisions, you know? All right. I'm going to give up a great job with great money to do this thing that just does not look good on paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, you know, ultimately if you're passionate about something, you know, you've got to do that thing. You know, you owe it to yourself. You know, I think life's just too short and too precious yep. to, to, to do, to not do what you, what you love, you know? And, and now I, I feel very passionate about, um, like, like we've got so much opportunities. We've, we're connected to the planet with the internet, right? We've got all these channels for free YouTube. You can, anyone can upload for free on YouTube, right? You never had that back in the day. So I think hmm. we've got, you've got so much more power as an artist and, and ability, you know, I think you can make it happen. Like I, I, you know, I kind of want to do an experiment, find the most, the most random person that has the most random passion, you know, maybe they're passionate mm. about crabs or something, you know, yeah. something really random. And, 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 and um, I feel like, you know, if they put in the work and um, 
you know, utilize those channels and build up, build up, you know, like a, a channel based around, you know, learning about crabs and the different crab species and blah, blah, blah. I bet you, I bet you they're going to, they're going to, you know, at least, at least um, catch on in, in some way, you know, I feel like you can. I mean, yep. there's, there's a channel out there about, you know, two, two cans, the birds, right? That's his full-time thing. He looks after toucans and talks about his toucans. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like now's the time. If you're passionate about something, you can monetize that. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. And um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard so many, like to, to have someone that's talking about music and, um, and so like, you know, you hear about this like woman who has dogs and creates, like my girlfriend follows this chick who has, to a pug and to um, some other fluffy white dogs. I don't know what they are. So my head, yeah. um, they're called the Twinchies. So I don't know what breed that is. But yeah, she has a full time career on Instagram, like just loving her dogs and making cartoons and drawing and stuff. And yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, exactly. That, That's um, great. To give it context. Well, also, I just want to point that out that you heard it here, folks. If anyone out there loves crabs, Rowan is the person to talk to about I'm building your YouTube channel right now. I'm your partner, <laughs> your business partner. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'll just jump across to Facebook and see whether we got any, any comments. Not as yet. So we've got a couple of people asking to join the group. Let me just, Christian, is that someone familiar to you? Potentially. Uh, cool. Don't know where the video has gone now. Oh no, crap. Oh, that's not up. No, I was just trying to find the video of us so I can monitor what it looks like. I may just have to look amongst abandoned. yourselves. Yeah, <laughs> talk amongst yourself, everybody. Ah, it's up. We got it. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, what do you think has been one of the biggest learning curves with monetizing? your music i mean i'm still i'm still experience experiencing that um just trying to manage everything and you know like taxes and all that sort of stuff you know just yep. setting aside and and just you know what you're investing in and that sort of thing because like because i tour and i want to tour that's a big part of what i want to do but like initially touring is quite expensive especially internationally yep so um and you know, promoting your music. I think I think if you want to have any chance at um, at doing it as a career, you've got to you've got to be willing to invest in it. Yep. And realize that you might invest lots. You know, that's why I work. That's why I feel like having a job is an important thing to to do initially. You want that money. You don't want to be stressing about money. You want to be getting money in and being able to set some aside for your your side hustle, I guess, if you want to call it that. And, yep. and but be willing to invest in it, you know. Um, so it's just sort of managing your 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 income and your expenses. Um, that's something I'm still navigating for sure. Yeah, cool. And if you've got like a like I'm, I've heard so many different ways of looking at the art and the promotion side of things and everything from like five percent should be the art budget and then ninety five percent should be the marketing budget and half and half and those kind of things. Have you got like some sort of ballpark either percentage or figure that people should start really thinking about? Mm, I mean, whatever you, art versus I don't, promotion. I don't have a, I don't have anything set out. Um, but, but you, you're trying to get the best you can for your, for the money, you know? Yeah. So you're always, um, just, you know, just, just, uh, I guess, Try and try and see, you know, with artists and stuff like that. You know, have conversations with them, figure out what they kind of expect as, as their, what they need, you know, to work on their things for you, and and um, get a feel for that. Because art, art can be a tricky one. Like, you know, when you work with a big artist, they they charge accordingly, right? Um, I don't have a set ratio or anything like that, but I just try yeah. to get the best best value I can. Um, if anything you can do yourself. You know, you gotta you gotta be willing to do that. You know, I mean, I do a lot of my own filming and video editing and stuff like that. Um, you know, you you get your girlfriend or your mum to hold the camera for you. You know, 
all of those <laughs> things, you, you got to do it, you know? Um, yeah, cool. I need to ring my mum and tell her I need, <laughs> <laughs> need some help. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Yeah, cool. And um, so what would be like, what would be your go-to resources for like books to read or podcasts or audios or mentors that you might have had over the years? Like, have you got things that you would definitely recommend people check out? Um, I was heavily listening to a podcast back when I was in my like last year of work. I'm just going to try and find out what it's called, but it was all about people going full-time in their passions and switching over from their job that they're not, they're doing out of necessity onto the, their passion as, as a full job. Yep. Um, just looking it up here. Um, it's called the passion PT. Passion PT. With Dan Brophy. And a lot of people we'll put this in the notes for anyone that's watching back later on. Yeah, I think he's an Australian guy too. Dan. Dan Brophy, B-R-O-P-H-Y. Cool. Yeah, yeah so right. I, was, I was listening to that. Um, yeah, I, I actually did get quite obsessed with making the switch, you know. So I was, I was you know, planning. You know, what, what I did at, at one point is, all right, let's figure out exactly all my expenses in life, all right? Mm -hmm. This much on food. This is how much my mortgage costs. This is how much petrol I need. This is this expense, that expense, iTunes account. You know, I figured out to the dollar every, every bit of money I would need to just scrape by at the bare minimum. Yep. Um, and, and I would monitor, okay, how much money is coming in with my music, right? And then you can see, okay, well, I'm not quite there yet. I need to keep pushing and all that sort of stuff. Um, um, but that, that gives you a clear indication and, and, you know, um, you know, the, the, the less, the more you can reduce your expenses in life, um, the, the better it's going to be, the better, the, the better it's going to enable you to, to do it. And another thing is like, I made the switch in one big jump, but you can, you can, um, do it over, over time. You know, you might go down to four days and go down to three days and slowly, slowly transition that way, which is what a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, for me, I just wanted to jump in and I felt like I could yeah. possibly <laughs> do that. So I just went I, all, all in. Yeah. I think I'm, I have a similar personality too, but I think there'd be a few people out there. They'd be like, I think we want to do this a little bit slower. Uh, yeah. I, I encourage that too. I, it's, I mean, everyone's got their own personal situation going on. Um, you know, you know, at, at one point, you know, um, I was, I was looking into like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the tiny house movement, mm -hmm. but they, people that live in like small, like houses on trailers or like a bus or something like that, because they, they just want to limit, they just want to really cut off that mortgage expense or that rent expense, you know? Um, and I was heavily looking into that because I was desperate to, I need to get out of this situation and, and be doing what I feel like I should be doing, you know? So I was heavily looking into that and I don't know if that would have suited me really <laughs> for, the, for the long term, but I was yep. willing to do it because I felt like that's, if that's going to get me to where I want to go, then that's a stepping stone there. Then hell yeah. You know, I think you got, you got to be willing to put yourself in an uh, uncomfortable situations to a degree as well. You know, any, anyone that you see that's um, like a, you know, making waves in their industry, they've, they've had to make some pretty hard decisions for sure. And, and risk things, you know, and there's no guarantee it's going to pay off either. So that's why it's mm. a scary thing. But, but ultimately your, your, your future self is going to tell you, you don't want to be, you know, 80 and be thinking like, oh, I wonder what could have happened. Mm. You no, know, why didn't, why didn't you just, why didn't you have a bit of a go? Like, I mean, the work, the, I feel like the worst situation is okay. It didn't work out. You know, you, you got your tail between your legs and you go back to your job, but really I think you wouldn't have your tail between your legs because you could look at everyone in the eye and say, bro, I had a go, you know? So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, I need, probably needed to hear that too. So yeah, that's really cool. Thanks. Um, if you are just tuning in, um, we're talking with Ro from I Built the Sky. 
Um, we are talking all things to do with going full time, professional, original, instrumental, heavy, yeah, something rather progressive metal music. Uh, and if you're liking what you're listening to, please check him out on Instagram at I Built the Sky. Uh, you can also check out his Patreon and a YouTube channels if you like as well. Cool. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Next question I've got is like, has there been any surprises revenue wise? Like with all the different streams uh, of revenue, was there something you just like, oh shit, people like this that you just like, I didn't realize that that would be a thing. Absolutely. So, um, so what I've noticed is like initially, like when I was releasing music, I was giving it out for free and like people can pay what they want or they can get it for free. I think that's a, an important step too. Um, mm -hmm. when you're starting off, you, if you're going to charge $20 for your album and no one's ever heard of you, you, you're not really not doing the best. You're doing yourself a bit of a, a disservice, I think, because you're not, you want to get your music out there. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta think of the, think of the bigger picture, you know, you want to initially you got to get people to hear the music and love the music and stuff like that. And then later on you can start to charge for your albums and what, what not. But, um, um, yeah, cause I do a pay what you want sort of thing. Um, people are very generous. I find, you know, people that really love what you're doing and it's really moved them in a, in a way. Um, sometimes they'll, they'll just give you an extra few bucks or, or something like that. You know, I think, I think Patreon is, is an example of that too. Cause you know, um, people are supporting you just, just, just giving you their, you know, a dollar per month or whatever. Um, and that's, they, they want to support you. That's the reason they're doing that. They like what you're doing and, and all that sort of stuff. Some, some big surprises that, that stand out is um, when I was on tour in Europe, um, I think I was in Nor Norway, Oslo, we played, I think it was a sold out show and it was a really good vibe and, you know, audience really dug it. And as soon as, you know, as soon as you play a, a play a show, I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's such a fun, fun thing. But then you, you gotta, you gotta get off, you get your 30 minutes on stage, then you gotta get off, you gotta pack up, you gotta get a shower in, you gotta eat, you gotta do all these things. It's, it's um, not, not just let's, yeah, it's, it's not straight up party. Like you've gotta, you've gotta organize yourself, you know? And then another part of that is usually I'll, I'll, you know, play the set and dash to the merch, you know, I've got to man the merch. Cause this is how I'm going to get a little bit back. Right. Um, and you know, people buy t-shirts, maybe sometimes they don't, you know, so I was like, all right, but you know, they might say, Oh, I really love that. You know, which is, that's great. You know, so I, I'm happy either way, but what happened uh, was someone was like, um, I think they messaged me after. So they didn't, I don't think they talked to me at the show or they may have, but they messaged me and like, Oh, Hey, what's your PayPal? I want to support, you know? And I'm like, Oh, that's awesome, man. Um, if you could just buy me, buy a CD, that would be amazing. Like, I really appreciate that. You know, and then he gives me a thousand dollars. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, so he's like, and I'm like, uh, I think you've made a mistake, dude. You've uh, you've sent me a thousand dollars. I don't know if you're, you're meant to send ten. Uh, yeah, and he's like, no, 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 you deserve it, man. Like, I really enjoyed your music. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> wow. So that that happened, and then and then um, when I got home, similar thing. Some dude was like, oh, I really love your music. I want to support you. I don't want to join your Patreon but I just want to, I want to help out. I'm like, same thing. I'm like, dude, if you could just buy like a CD, that'd be amazing. Dude sends me 1200 bucks. So that stuff happens, you know, people that I think, I think, you know, you really give someone an experience when they, when they love your music. You know, I know how I feel when I, when I listen to something I really love, you know, it just, it just, it's everything, man. Like it really hits mm -hmm. and people that have, you know, good money, they earn, you know, that's not much to them. They, uh, they would love you to have that and for you to be able to use that towards, you know, promoting or something, you know? So, yeah. And I mean, I mean, another, another example of that was, um, at NAM. I went to NAM, and, um, you know, that's where all the music instrument convention thing, it's like the biggest on the planet sort of thing. Every company showcases their new products and whatnot. Um, yeah. I went there and I got recognized by someone who worked at the Kiesel booth, um, Kiesel Guitars. They recognized me because their band had, had um, uh, we had supported their band and um, they recognized us, me and Sam. And um, 
dude's like, oh, you're that band, right? From Australia. I'm, yeah. I'm like, yeah. So we had a quick chat and he's like, man, you guys are great. Like you're really good. Like what are you guys doing for guitars? Like, you know, I'm like, oh, like, cause we were, we were trying to figure out how, how can we get this conversation going about, you know, potentially having endorsements and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you know, I mean that you don't want to be that guy at NAMM that's trying to get an endorsement. Right. But, but you want to have those conversations like, cause that's where you network and stuff like that. But it's just mm. really, it's a really awkward thing, but out of nowhere, this guy recognized us. He loved us straight away. What are you doing for guitars? Let's talk about it. You know? And I got a free guitar and it was incredible. Yeah. That's awesome. That's such a great story. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's like, <clears throat> oh, pardon me. I've lost my voice. This is great. <laughs> it's a great talk show. <clears throat> um, I don't know whether it's something you can sort of pinpoint as well, but it's kind of like when you, for me, whenever I've taken a risk or I've said no to something or I've said yes to something that's really like, you know, a big risk. It's like, it's like the universe kind of conspires to you and kind of, um, I don't know, gifts you these these amazing mm -hmm. gifts. So, um, yeah, I don't know whether you can pinpoint some moments where you're just like, yeah, this is like, well, either, either was going to NAMA risk and was going, doing overseas tours a risk. And, um, oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's all a risk, you know, like, anything international you know it's expensive like yeah it's just expensive like it's just no way around it so and touring especially you'd be surprised how much it costs a band to tour internationally um yeah if you haven't done it you might be surprised at how what the expenses are it's pretty intimidating right um but but the thing is you know, you've got to be willing to do that stuff. It's, it's investing, you know, you're investing in yourself. Um, and that's how you get to the next level because, because, you know, the perception of, of your community is like, Oh, they're out there doing it. They're not just talking about it online. They're out there doing it. So mm -hmm. you're immediately you're in that next category, you know, you're out there doing it. Right. Yeah. And, and um, it, it's, it's, it's just the snowball effect, you know, so you're going to be investing at times, but, but if you're if you're passionate enough and you're you 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 feel like um you know you feel like you're confident in what you do, it just makes so much sense to do it and 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 it it is so much it it's the only way you're going to get to those next level, you know. So I, I don't know if that's answered your question, but <laughs> I'm sure it's very like international touring is now my new jam. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like if you want to yeah chat to Roe about any of this, please reach out to him. I dare yeah, say absolutely. You, you like, I, from what I gather, you like sharing this stuff with people. So for sure, um, cool, awesome. Um, we got, I've got a couple of deep questions. We'll probably we'll have a bit of a jam till probably um, twelve o'clock. I'll just check on Facebook and see how things are going. Now we're we're all good. We're happy to keep going. Sweet. Um, so what what would be the greatest piece of advice? you've been given um well that that like initially when i um when i quit all my bands you know um i had a conversation with a friend that was that i that i told them i mean th this this might resonate with some and not with others because i i was telling him that i was in this band not because i love the band and the music but because i feel like it had a career potential and he said, that's a bad idea. Um, you, you know, that's, that's not a good idea. So that, that was some advice that I got that, that, that really hit me um, at that point. Cause I was thinking, Oh, you, you kind of right there. Like, it's not really my passion. I'm, I'm doing it for a, because it's potentially a career, you know? Yeah. I think, I think you can't go wrong. If you're passionate about something, you can't go wrong by following that passion. You just can't because you're either going to not make any money, but, but you're passionate about it. So, I mean, you'll enjoy it. So that, I mean, it's a no brainer or if you can make a living off it, then hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's a few people on the other side of that process where they're, they're making their art and they're like, this doesn't make any money. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing for sure. Yeah, but, you know, if you're you just, if you're passionate about it and you love what you're doing that, you know, the money comes later, you know, don't worry about the money yet. Just do the great thing that you do to the best that you can do it. The money will come later. Yeah, that's cool. 
That's really cool. Um, what's the nicest thing someone else has ever done for you? The nicest thing. I mean, I mean, those, those random financial. I was going to say, is there any other, is there any other events? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, just, just people like messaging me and just saying how much that my music means to them, you know, um, it's just really, t- it takes me aback, you know, um, or, you know, that, that my music's got them through something. And I feel like those things are the most impactful things. Um, yeah. I mean, just people supporting me, like, you know, people on Patreon, you know, there's people out there that are willing to give me a dollar a month. That's just for, just cause they think, Oh, I like this guy. He's, he's, he's got some cool music, you know, that, that stuff is to me just nice. And I feel like that's those, those moments when people share, share your music or tell someone about your music or come up to you after a show and those interactions, you know, yeah, that's, that's the stuff that stands out to me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and I've got this next question is what's the most significant moment of your life? And it kind of could blur into some other things we've already mentioned, but is there anything else, maybe even outside of music that, um, really made a difference to, to where you're at now and it was kind of one of those turning points where you just like everything has led up to this point in order to get me to where I am now. So I mean, anything I, else? I try not to think about that stuff, you know, I, I just sort of, um, but, but I mean, there are those moments, you know, like, I mean, get, getting a million views on that video on YouTube. Yeah. Um, that was pretty special because, because that was what we used to joke about. We'd make all these videos. Like we made lots of videos before that. And we'd be like, this is the one million views. This is going to be it. This has to be it. Cause you know, every, every time we make a video, we put a lot into it and we really try to make something cool. You never know how anyone, you never know if anyone's going to care or not, but, but, um, yeah, that, that was a bit of a moment for sure. Cause, cause I'm, I'm putting my, my balls on the line. I'm quitting my job and, <laughs> you know, people from work are like, are you coming back or what's this video? Um, I'm like, ah, oh, don't worry no, about that. Cause you're still working at the point in the video. Yeah. Is online. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, don't worry about that video. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> just bro it's just bro it's just bro and then yeah it's just uh, it's just uh, don't worry about that that's fine um yeah um i mean like yeah. i mean like getting a job was a big one too you know it, it enabled me to move out of home and you know i felt like independent i could do whatever i want you know that was a big moment for sure um uh and yeah i mean getting the job was really cool uh, if I mentioned that already. So, yeah. so those things and just, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, last year when I made that video, it was a pretty big moment and just the response was overwhelming and, and still is. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, uh, if you haven't checked it out or you're, you're just new to learning about row, um, even if you're not into progressive instrumental metal rock music, um, check out the video up into the ether on YouTube, um, which is the video we were talking about. It's got a million views. Um, some of the drone shots um, over the Twelve Apostles. Twelve Apostles. It's it's very close by. Yeah. It's um, absolutely spectacular coastline. So um, yeah, you can even if you don't like that music, listen to the music for starters. And if you don't like it, just watch the video. Just turn it down. That's so, all good. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. I think um, I think we've covered some pretty cool ground today. Um, if you, um, yeah, would like to check out Ro and some of his stuff, please, um, check out Instagram at I built the sky, Facebook at I built the sky and Patreon and yep. anywhere else that we would send people Bandcamp. Um, yeah, Bandcamp. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've, I've got this sort of quote in here or a question that was sort of to finish up, what advice would you give your younger self? And like, I love the idea that we talked earlier today about what is the, your future self giving advice to, but what, you know, what advice would you give to your younger self or someone that's like thinking about, you know, starting to invest more time in understanding how to, you know, turn their art into a career? Um, 
I would say like for one, you got, you got to enjoy the, the process. You got to embrace the process, enjoy the process and enjoy the challenge of the process. Um, it's not going to be easy by any means, but you know, the more you, the more you enjoy that challenge, I think that's going to help you. Um, and, and just don't let it, I mean, yeah, don't let it consume you too much. You know, do, do live your life and enjoy those normal person things as, as well. <laughs> um, it, it's easy to get caught up too much uh, in things and stress about it. And you just sort of become unhappy because you know, you know, you never, you're never going to, you know, you might never feel like you're at where you, you would like to be. You know, even, even massive celebrities say that because when they get there, their expectations are always above. So they just never get to the, where they think they should be, you know? So that's just, that's how it is. You, you know, you, you might feel that way. So just, just know that at least, um, and just keep it fun. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a big thing for me too, to just keep it fun. I think I'm like, I, I do a lot of music education as well. So a lot of my lessons are having similar kind of, um, situations where i'm like i've got this original music over here which is awesome and then yeah but i actually consciously have to go let's just have fun today and mm -hmm. enjoy the process of this musical discovery and um and be a good music teacher as opposed to this disgruntled old music teacher that, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that i came across so much as a young person <laughs> yeah cool um yeah have you got anything else you'd like to share with anyone to finish off today um well uh if you do like random instrumental progressive music um i'm, I'm gonna release a new song soon that i'm really excited about so um please please check back in maybe a few weeks about that um yeah i'm re actually really excited about this thing got some friends involved in that and it should be a good good one and it uh it has a, a surprise it does we're not going to emphasize too much <laughs> probably work it out but uh yeah there's, there's a few surprises in there actually oh yeah it's it's really cool i'm i'm stoked that it's a uh, it's coming together but yeah cool well Roy, thanks so much for coming on and talking with me about all things to do with your career and uh i'm sure there's going to be a few people that are just like wow that's so cool um just well, if if not just myself um, but yeah, I'm very grateful for you to um, to come on and, and help out and and, uh, and share your journey with with everyone. Um, there's so many people out there that are suffering from mental health challenges and um, and uh, like for musicians, suicide rates are like more than double, and 60% of people are going through challenges with mm. mental health and all of this stuff. And and to have someone like yourself who's doing their art and actually making it sustainable um, and be able to pay a mortgage and all of those things is uh, is pretty cool. So. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to speak with you today. And um, thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much for having me. That was awesome. I enjoyed that. Cool. Uh, we'll catch you later. And if anyone's got any questions watching back later on, please just put them in the comments and either myself or Roy will help you out. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Catch you later, guys. <laughs>